All right, so today is kind of a unique day. There was a time that I incubated a bunch of little chicks. I don't know if everybody, whoever's followed our channel, you probably saw little chicks. Well, out of those 50 plus little chicks, we have, I don't know, 25 to 30 roosters that need to be dispatched today. So I don't do the killing. Mark and Everest are gonna do the killing, but me and Logan are going to clean the shop up and get it prepared. We were kind of hoping, we were waiting to see if we had enough time to get the processing kitchen completed so we can go ahead and butcher them there. However, we need to get them done now. There's just too many of them. Um, and I'm not sure if you've seen our latest video. Every time Mark is like talking, uh, there's like a hundred roosters trying to crow. So today we're taking them all down except two. And we already picked out the two that we want around. Um, also, today is a unique day because you will see my boys' hairs pull back. They weren't too super thrilled about it, but they're pulled back because we don't want them touching their hair, especially when we're doing any chicken stuff. Anyways, everybody's hair is pulled back. Chickens are pretty easy. Most similar poultry are very much the same. So we don't want to get into the gut cavity. Mm -hmm. We're going to take this connective skin off and open the thigh right out to the joint, okay? So come right in here and you see how we're in connective tissue there, but we're not into any actual meat cuts, okay? So connect that, open that up, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is where the thigh connects to the hip, so we're going to come right down that, cut through, and then pull. See, the hip just pops right out. Okay. Then we can cut this right along that carcass and backbone. And that's already popped out of the joint, so we don't have to work that. Okay. And I should have done this first, but I didn't. I always do it first, but I didn't this time because I was excited, excited to show you. Work the joints and let them go to work for you. Mm -hmm. So that you're not cutting into the bone with your knife, because that will make it go real fast. Yeah. This is a lot better controlled if I have, if I do it before I take the leg mm -hmm. one, one leg corner, right? Mm -hmm. You see the, the little uh, round parts of the hand of the chicken leg, right? Mm -hmm. So you can right below those round parts and cut and come around and then just break it down. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot easier than what I was doing that first time. And then again, right in between, right off. I kind of want these chicken wings for dinner tonight. Do you? Yeah. Where do you want the organ meat instead? Organ meat. <laughs> Ever since. Gizzards and hearts and livers and chest. Oh, that would be that'd be pretty good if you chop it up finely and not finely, it's whole. Whole salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. <laughs> okay. Okay. Chickens are such transparent skin, you can see where that connective joint is, right? Yeah. Mm. So I'm gonna come in here and pull the joint, cut through the connective stuff, the skin, mm -hmm. and pop that joint. And you're just following the joint. In the joint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the breastplate. This is where you're going to be a little bit more delicate with with the, the cuts, right? Okay. And keep my knife from penetrating in. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't want to cut into those guts. Okay. The hearts right up here. Right. Just pull it out and come out. And the liver. Yeah. Cook them and stuff. Yeah. Very easy. Just, just pull it out. Huh? It's a yeah, the dark meat. <laughs> Gizzard. Okay, so that's all free. We have the testicles, 
And then it's quite hard to meter a chicken. It's what? It's quite hard to meter a chicken. <laughs> yeah. They're tucked up in a safe place, aren't they? Yeah. There's like these membranes around the muscle, you know? And that's like the abrasion protection for the movement. Mm -hmm. So if you get those, see all that. Mm -hmm. Get that loose and it'll peel off. Let's see. Slides right out. And then the same thing, right? Around the base. Connect the mus muscles. Okay? Neck, back. Okay, now the heart, see, it has the same thing. It has all that, like a sack around it. Mm -hmm. So I just set it down and push the sack part of it, any part of it down to the table mm -hmm. and pull it through so that it opens up mm -hmm. and it peels off. It's a fat heart. Yeah. And then you want to come right about at that line, the fat line, and just yeah. cut the valves. Yeah. That's all the valve mechanism of the heart. And then the heart is up there. And you can come right now to the rim. Open that guy up. Can you see it here? Mm -hmm. you just find an edge. Mm -hmm. Start at the middle. Okay. When you just want the same kind of way to put it, you feel all that silver steam a bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hard working muscle. That's the hardest working muscle in which you can. Beauty is uh, is uh, gone. You need no, you need a lady that can that could catch a chicken. <laughs> now I can catch you a need, chicken, but I can't. I don't think one. you can catch it. I mean, I maybe. <laughs> What time of day? Like I'll go get them from the coop. Yeah. In the evening. <laughs> and I'll pluck the chickens all day long. But not the not the killing, huh? Not the killing. That one's hard for you, but yeah. Once they're dispatched, then it's not so bad for you. <laughs> this is like every tall tale of every European woman. <laughs> I feel like I should be holding two, like. Two chickens in my hand. You need to have your babushka bandana on. Yes. <laughs> and your and your babushka apron. Yes. That's right. <laughs> that was a long day of processing. We used to use a lot of whole chickens and we just don't anymore. Our family's not big enough to have that kind of servings generally. So anymore, we decided that when we were going to process these, we wanted segments that we would be able to use a lot easier. So that's why we did leg quarters, wings, and then split the carcass and have the breastplate and then the backbone and neck. We processed 17 birds and we got a lot of meat out of it. I'm gonna weigh everything once we get it all packed. Um, I know we weighed one of the larger birds after we got it plucked and the legs off but we didn't have it gutted. Um, and it was over it was seven, over seven and a half pounds. Yeah, there's guts in there too, so that's probably another pound, pound and a half, maybe something like that. But that's that's a pretty pretty good sized bird for just being a free range bird and not having to really hardly feed them. So we consider that a real, real win for us. It's a lot of work to do that many all at once for us, but maybe we'll get to a point where we're doing it. 10 at a time or something, not 17. So I'm keeping the backbone and neck. This is perfect soup stock. This is the best thing in the world to put in a slow cooker or crock pot or instant pot, pressure cooker or something like that. And just cook this down low and slow for a while. All that meat will fall off of the carcass entirely. And the fat that's in there and the, 
collagen out of the skin and bones and everything just makes such a rich, rich soup broth. So this is perfect for like chicken noodle or any kind of chicken broth base. And you get the value of plenty of meat in there too. So you don't have to have chicken stock and chicken meat to try to get the flavor in the soup. This is gonna have all of the flavor in the world. We're just packing these up as a backbone carcass with the neck in each pack. And I'm just gonna mark them as chicken soup. We're gonna pack up the leg quarters in uh, two leg quarters per pack, which is about right for the four of us that are home anymore. We got, that's a thigh and a leg times two. So four servings and four people. So we'll pack them up that way. We decided we were going to do some ground chicken. We are gonna separate some of the thighs and separate the drumstick off of the thigh and pack the drumsticks separately and then keep the thighs and we will debone those and have a nice rich quality meat uh, that will be breast meat and thigh meat. Uh, the wings we're gonna pack up probably in 10 total, like a, the drumlet and the wing part, counting that as two, we should have 34, we had 17 birds, so. We should have 34 of that. Now, if you were to order wings, that would be the equivalent of 68 wings ordered. So we'll probably pack them up into like 10 packs, and that way we can pull out a 10 pack of wings for any kind of event that we wanna cook up just wings. And uh, we'll pack them up that way and keep probably 10 of them because the Super Bowl's tomorrow. And we're gonna try those side by side with some store-bought wing cuts that I'm gonna cook the same way side by side and we'll see what the crowd favorite is. I can already tell you that it's gonna be our homegrown chicken. We talked many times about trying to raise like meat chickens for, you know, which is really common. A lot of people will, will get batches of meat chickens and raise them from chicks and give them to that nine weeks or 10 weeks and then butcher them at four to five pound whole birds. And it's just not, our style, it's just not what we're into right now. We don't have the means to isolate a pack of 50 birds and keep them in like these tractors. Our ground doesn't work that way. We don't have flat ground that works for those little hutches that move every day and all that kind of stuff. So what we did instead is we, we just incubated these eggs last spring and we were going to butcher these around October, but we just didn't have the time and we didn't have things set up we were hoping to have the kitchen done and it wasn't, so we ultimately just needed to get them done by now. So that's what we've done. We've gone ahead and butchered them out, but we didn't have hardly anything into these birds. And there's a lot of meat. The eggs were our eggs. We incubated them and then hatched them out and raised them. We kept them isolated for a few weeks until they were big enough. And then they came out and went up into the, into the pasture with the others and they just had free range. We do supply a little bit of feed in the summertime, but they pretty much range and that's it. They eat grass, they eat bugs, they roam and they eat and they do their thing. They have basically a couple of acres up here that they just roam around in and they stay really close and that's what they're raised on. So our cost into these birds is just so minimal. And it didn't matter to us that we had a bunch of roosters um, to butcher because they butcher up just fine and they're much bigger than the hens anyway. Uh, the thing that took a big long time with the butchering process on these is that we saved the organ meats. Um, and that takes a lot more time because then you're having to sort through the entrails as you go, pulling them out and everything. And it just takes more time. We saved the gizzards, we saved the hearts, we saved the livers, and we saved the testicles. Everest was excited as all get out. He went home last night after we were butchering and he, he cooked up probably a dozen testicles and he just was like thrilled to eat them. He went, sliced them in half, floured them and, and pan fried them a little bit, add some eggs with them and he said they were just delicious. This is one of his favorite things. So uh, we have the organ meats separated out and they're frozen now. Um, those are always best fresh but I knew we wouldn't have enough time to to do too much with them for a meal yesterday. And so as soon as we got them gathered up, rinsed them and bagged them and froze them last night. We'll probably keep the, take the hearts. If 
for tomorrow. Um, we've done it once or twice before and it's one of our favorite ways is we take the chicken hearts and we'll slow cook them for a while to kind of tenderize them. They don't really tenderize that much, but we tenderize them a little bit that way. And then um, we stuff the chambers of the hearts with a little bit of cream cheese and a wedge of jalapeno and then lightly bake it just to bring all that flavor together. And they're like jalapeno poppers for the carnivores, I guess. <laughs> so they're pretty tasty. Anyway, yeah, we try to use everything we can of, of the whole bird and make, make good use of it. So, okay. So basically I've had all the fun I want to have <laughs> cutting chicken. So I quit. I was going to debone all these breast plates to grind them. I got through five of the breast plates and eight thighs and I'm done. I've had all the fun I can have for now. <laughs> I've spent all day yesterday butchering and a good part of this afternoon packing and wrapping and I'm ready to move on from this project and get moving to things that need my attention more than this. I could probably run this all through one time and be done. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do is go for a coarse grind just to get everything segmented, make sure that the skins go through good and everything like that. And then I will change over to the medium plate, which is the, really the kind of the texture that we prefer for the ground meat is that medium plate. I haven't weighed it yet. There's, oh, there's probably seven or eight pounds, maybe a little bit more. And we're gonna just grind it up. I'll weigh it out, see how much I have, and then I'll just divide it out evenly into about a pound. And I'll probably just go ahead and roll and pack it. On this grind with the medium plate, I'm gonna grind everything through. And once it's all ground and just have the stuff that's left in the throat, I'll feed a couple of ice cubes down there and that will clear the chunks and the pieces and make sure that all the last bits of the chicken has come through the grinder and is cleared. Let's see how much this weighs out. Eight pounds, 15 ounces in that tub weighs one pound with 10 ounces. So seven pounds, five ounces of ground chicken. I'm not gonna bother weighing each one, I'm just gonna Divide that to about seven portions and we'll see how that looks. That will work. Okay, now we'll just pack this and wash my hands again. Logan, you want to write these down on the board for me? Yeah. 2-9. 2-3. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. And... One, one. Yep. Okay. So we have a total of 76 pounds, 12 ounces of total packaged meat for the freezer. Out of 17 birds, that's an average of four and a half pounds each. And that's packaged meat. 
Holy cow, four and a half pounds each on average. We got seven pounds of burger, 14 pounds, five ounces of these breast plates, 22 pounds, five ounces, just out of the backbones and necks for soup. 68 count of wings, so nine pounds, four ounces each, and then the leg quarters was 23 pounds, nine ounces. A lot of, lot of chicken in the freezer all of a sudden. That is great. That's everything we were hoping out of. I'm gonna wash the dishes, wash the tubs, wash the everything, <laughs> rinse it all off, wash it all down, and then we'll call it done for heaven's sakes. That's probably one of the biggest reasons that we've waited for a while to do these chickens. Was we wanted the chick that processing kitchen done, but we didn't figure that was going to work out and be done. But the fact that we have hot water in there brings hot water into the shop. And man, that's such a game changer. I have this hose bib on the shop side and we just hook the hose up and that's hot water straight. So we can run 140 degree water right through out the hose. And man, to doing this kind of keeping it clean and sanitary and keeping things tidy, it's so much nicer when you're doing this kind of job to have that hot water. You can immediately fill buckets and wash things down and not have to boil the water first to get it up to temperature that you can actually use to clean. So that's made a hugely improvement on being able to process these things, even though we don't have the kitchen prepared and ready yet. So. Seventy six pounds, twelve ounces of chicken. It's a pretty full freezer. <laughs>